Hello, this is video 70. This video is very closely related to the previous one, which was the pressure due to the weight of a fluid. This video is going to be the pressure due to the atmosphere. Now in the previous video, when I was talking about that fluid and the weight of it, I was discussing liquids, but a fluid can be a liquid or a gas. And the atmosphere is a gas. The atmosphere is all the air that is above us. Now, it turns out that all of the air that is above it, above us, which is represented here by all these dots here, it really only extends to 30 kilometers as far as it being dense enough to have significant mass and weight. So, it extends further than 30 kilometers, I think up to about 120 kilometers, but after 30 kilometers, its density is so low, there are so few molecules per volume that anything above 30 kilometers really does not can contribute significant weight. So it turns out that the mass of the air above us exerts a pressure of 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. So this is 101,000 pascals. What this picture is showing here, it's kind of silly, but it's a good illustration. It's saying, okay, what if you had a bamboo stick? And a bamboo stick has an area of approximately one centimeter squared. And what if you had that bamboo stick and it extended 30 kilometers high, the height of the significant part of our atmosphere that exerts pressure on the Earth. So what would be the mass of all the air in that bamboo stick here? You know that air has a low density, and if you do the math, you'll find out that the mass of the air in a bamboo stick that extends up to 30 kilometers high and has that cross-sectional area here of one centimeter squared, the mass is only one kilogram. That's how low of a density that air has. So if you extend this mass per area to a mass per meter squared and a weight per meter squared, you can actually get 101,000 pascals. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. If you do it and just email me your work, then I'll give you a point extra credit on the test. So this pressure due to the atmosphere is also called one atmosphere. This gives us the conversion factor between the units of pascals and the units of atmosphere. We represent the pressure due to the atmosphere by P sub zero, P naught. So pressure due to the atmosphere is going to be a constant. Whenever we have a liquid in a problem that is open, right? let's say this is a glass, and it's an open glass, then that means that the pressure exerted right here on the surface of that liquid is going to be PO. It's going to be the pressure due to the atmosphere, all the weight of the air pressing down on that glass. Let's do an example of this. Let's look at the barometer. A barometer measures atmospheric pressure. What happens is that you put a liquid in a tube and then you invert that tube in another container. That other container is open to the atmosphere. So the atmosphere is pressing down here. The more that the atmosphere presses down, the more the liquid is pushed up the tube. So you can read the height of the tube and it corresponds to a certain atmospheric pressure. In this example, the height of the mercury column, so we use mercury as our liquid, the height is 760 millimeters. Find the pressure of the atmosphere. How much pressure is pushing down here? that is causing the mercury to rise up to a height of 760 millimeters. We are also given the density of mercury, 
1.36 times 10 to the fourth kilograms per meter cubed. How in the world do we do this? What we have to figure out for this problem, what we have to understand, and I don't expect you to figure this one out on your, on your own. This is just my way of introducing the topic of the barometer. What you have to figure out is that, first of all, the barometer is equilibrium. Once the atmosphere has pushed down, then it's going to stay at that constant height due to that constant pressure. So the weight of this liquid here is pressing down. We talked about that in a previous video. Weight exerts a pressure because it's a force per area. So if this barometer is going to be in equilibrium, then the amount of pressure exerted here by the weight of the column has to be the same pressure as that exerted by the atmosphere so that they balance each other out. And we learned in a previous video what was the pressure exerted by a certain volume of liquid or fluid. That pressure we found due to the weight of a fluid was rho gh. We are given the density, g is 9.8, and we are given the height. So we can plug in those numbers. 1.36 times 10 to the 4 kilograms per meter cubed times 9.8 meters per second squared. Now the height, we do need to convert it to meters. I'll do it on the side here, 760 millimeters. There are 1,000 millimeters in one meter. So just divide 760 by 1,000, you'll get 0 0.760. Multiply these three numbers, and we're going to get 1.01 .01 times 10 to the 5 pascals. Does this number look familiar? It should. It's the number that we just saw in the previous slide. That was the standard number that we have for the pressure due to the atmosphere. So the purpose of this example, first of all, is to let you know that when you have standard atmospheric pressure, the barometer, that height of that mercury, is going to be 760 millimeters. If the pressure is higher, then the height is going to go up a little bit. And then the other reason for me showing this example is just to remind you that the pressure due to the weight of a liquid is rho gh. Let's do one more question related to this idea. And it's a your turn question, but I'll just discuss it with you guys. It says, if a barometer was filled with water instead of mercury, how tall would it have to be? So you notice that the barometer was filled with mercury. Mercury is very dense. The density was 1.36 times 10 to the fourth. I'll write that here. You know that water is definitely not that dense. The density of water is a thousand kilograms per meters cubed. So first of all, if the water is less dense than the mercury, do you think that the barometer would have to be higher or lower? than the regular one that we just saw that only had to be up to a height of 760 millimeters. That's the one that we just saw. Right, this height here was 760 millimeters. If something is less dense, what do you think? So hopefully you said, well, it's going to have to be higher because if it's less dense, it doesn't weigh as much per that volume, so in order for it, for the weight of that water that's in here, in order for that pressure to balance the pressure due to the atmosphere pushing down here, well, you're going to have to have a much bigger volume of water. Well, if you do, pressure is rho gh, for the pressure exerted due to the weight of that liquid, and you want it to balance 
the pressure from the atmosphere, the 1.01 times 10 to the 5 pascals, then you can actually solve for what height that water has to be, where you're going to put a density of water here to be a thousand. So you can find the height to be 1.01 times 10 to the 5 divided by 9.8 times 1,000 for the density of water. What you're going to get when you do this is you're going to get 10.3 meters. Not millimeters, but meters. So that is the reason why our barom barometers are not filled with water. They would have to be extremely tall in order for that water to have enough weight to balance out the atmospheric pressure. So that's it for this video. We talked about how the atmosphere exerts some pressure. Anytime you have an open liquid, so a glass of water or something like that, you're not going to be told how much pressure is exerted at the surface. You just have to know, okay, it's going to be P naught, the pressure due to the atmosphere.